give you the complete lineup now of 3D efficiency, having messed it up previously. There's Fred Palethorpe on drums, uh, Roy Campbell bass, John Reynolds guitar, Steve Spurgeon keyboards, Phil Martin sax, and uh, Richie Holmes on vocals. Hopefully this is the first from 3D efficiency. It's called Alone. <laughs> That's the first from 3D Efficiency, which is spelt like A fish in C, and it's called Alone. As I say, we're going to be speaking to the drummer stroke manager, as he's become in the course of the evening, before the end of the programme. Got an and uh, another number now from 3D Efficiency, after which we'll speak to uh, Freddie Paleforth of that, uh, that organisation. This is called Some Die for Money. <laughs> Dying screams, 
3D efficiency and it's caused some die for money and in a moment or so on the programme I'll be announcing the name of the winner of last week's Bruce Grobelar competition and setting this week's Bruce Grobelar competition. It's all pretty exciting stuff as soon as we decide what the prize might possibly be. Earlier on I said that we were going to be talking to Freddie Palethorpe and accused him of being the manager of the band. He's very embarrassed about this. He's actually the drummer. Do you have a manager? Uh, no, not actually, John. Well, at the moment we're looking for one. Yeah. So, <laughs> I am definitely not the manager. <laughs> what's going to happen to you as a consequence of my saying that you are? As I say, managers get a lot more money. I know this because I've seen some of them in action. True, yeah. Well, I wouldn't mind the uh, tag of a manager, but uh, definitely not with 3D. <laughs> First of all, I mean, Liverpool bands have got a, a bit of a reputation for coming up with rather bizarre names. What on earth made you decide to call yourselves 3D Efficiency and then spell it like a fish in C, as in trawling? Well, it's funny, Daly, because... We were known... It better be. I mean, well, <laughs> it's very funny, actually. We were known as snapshots, first of all. Yeah. And we wanted to keep the link with cameras. And we were looking through a few magazines. And we were looking oh. at the type of a lens. Oh, yeah. And uh, it just came about that. We were going to actually be called 3D Efficiency. Yeah. Spelt that way. Yeah. But we, we... No, we thought no. And we mixed it up a little bit. And split it up. But um, like people like yourself, it does turn heads. Yes, of course it does. Yes, because I mean, it was one of the... Uh, we first heard the band on a demo tape which you sent to London, one of several which people have sent to Radio 1 over the past few years, but yours was one of the ones we actually got around to listening to. And uh, here you are as a consequence of that. What's, what's the history of the band then? Can you give us... I mean, is there a history? There is uh, a history, yeah. We've, all the members have been in and out of bands, local bands, um, before 3D ever come about. Uh, as I say, Snapshots was the, the, well, the baby of it, sort of thing. I had a single by a band called Snapshots. Was that you or was that another band? I uh, definitely wasn't Snapshots, not us, no. Wow. But um, from there on in, we, well, the members of the band came together with Snapshots and yeah. then the lineup changed slightly and uh, we came out as 3D. Well, Phil Ross was saying uh, about half an hour ago or so that uh, it's actually quite easy these days to find uh, gigs to play in, in, in Liverpool. I mean, have you found this to be the case? No, I'd like to. Um, well, I differ with him there, actually, because it's okay for saying that the gigs uh, are easy to come by, but there's not many places to play. Yeah, well, no, know, that sounds a bit contradictory, that. I mean, you... Yeah, but, I mean, I mean to say, you can, you can play gigs in Liverpool if you've got, say, the type of PA, and also the money up front before you play. Yeah. Like, you can go to clubs, but there again, you've got to put money up front before you do play, and then you've also got to have the PA to play with. 
So you might say, in other words, it's going to cost you money, really, basically. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and a lot of the bands in Liverpool just haven't got the money. Incidentally, for those people, uh, I mean, people listening, in case you heard an extra voice, I think it was a passing taxi which we pick up as they are picking their way through the vast crowds of people that are milling around in the street outside. A great personal danger to themselves, but just for the sheer pleasure of seeing what a real Radio 1 DJ looks like. What are, what are your aspirations then, Freddie, to get back to a 3, 3D efficiency? I mean, how do you see yourself? I mean, ask the other people. Let's ask the people that in workshop, and later on, listeners, you'll hear me ask the people in Shipley the self so question because I can't think of any other questions to ask. But, I mean, how do you see yourself getting out of Liverpool? What's the process by which you can become known to a, a nationwide audience? I don't know, really. It's hard because if people come down to see it in Liverpool, I, I and our men from London... But do they ever do that, in fact? Well, we've had a couple of people come down. But the problem being is when you come down to see you, do you automatically expect uh, an audience response yeah. wherever you're playing? Now, it's just not so in Liverpool, to be quite honest. Like, they expect people to jump up probably dancing or whatever and they looked a lot towards the audience and take a little bit away off the bands yeah. it's not really fair and do you think that they're possibly looking for us again as phil ross hinted earlier on that they're looking for another echo in the bunny man or another te teardrop explodes or what i don't really know i think they may be looking for someone different but i mean what would you class as different uh, certainly you know there's not many different bands around it's yeah, well, I've, I've noticed with record companies in the past, and uh, I'm not putting the, the big record companies down necessarily in this context, but I mean, they do see when they want to look for something different, they want it not too different. They want it to be pretty much the same as something which has already been successful. Exactly, yeah. We've had quite a few people turn around to us, well, a couple of people turn around in uh, high places sort of thing, and say, well, you're not quite different enough, but I don't know what they will class as different. Yeah. So, in other words, basically what you're hoping is that uh, possibly something may come from this session being broadcast on Radio 1 and hope that somebody might pick up on it. Exactly, yeah. I, I think it's, it's been the biggest break that 3D efficiency have ever had up to now. But um, I'm, I'm sure, I'm speaking for the other five lads that aren't here tonight, it won't be the last one. Well, I hope you're right. OK, thanks very much. There's another one from 3D efficiency, which is very difficult to say, horridly. It's an instrumental. It's called Houdini.
number three D, efficiency, opportunity knocks. That's uh, Houdini, the title of that, and another one from the band before the end of the program. This is the last from three D, efficiency.
Saving the best one to the end, of course, typically. That's 3D efficiency, and it's called The Orchard. Probably something to do with Chekhov, I shouldn't wonder. And uh, the session produced by Dale Griffin, an engineer...